Welcome to the GP Podcast, where we come together to explore topics that surround our walk with Christ. I'm your host, Dan Royal, and I'm thrilled to have you join us today. The letters GP in our podcast name represent the name of our church, Grace Point. Our main campus is located in Naperville, Illinois, but Grace Point also has a campus in Plainfield. If you're curious to learn more about us, make sure to head to our website, www.gracepoint.us, and check us out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss any new episodes in the future. Now, whether you are a longtime member or someone new who's interested in Grace Point, this podcast can be a sanctuary for you to learn more about God. Our topics will always center around the Christian faith, and each podcast will typically feature another host or guest that has a heart for and a knowledge of the topic. We'll answer questions like how to get more from your Bible study or how to grow your small group, or what the point of baptism is, or maybe even how to work on your prayer life. But regardless of the topic, we will always aim to lead you into a deeper understanding of how Christ wants you to live your life, and how to grow in your walk with Him. Join us now as we grow in Christ together. Hello again, I'm Dan Royal. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. This is our first ever podcast for the GP podcast here at Grace Point. We're really excited about that. And joining me in studio today is Nancy Kramer. She's our missions director here, has been for a little while now. Nancy, I'm so glad you're here. We're really excited to have you on. And I just I just wanted to start first with your story. We'll we'll start with the basics. How did you become a Christian? And then what led you to Grace Point itself? Okay, well, thanks for having me. I am excited to be here. Um, So I was raised in a home where my mom was Catholic. She was raised Catholic by the nuns, and my father was raised Lutheran. Neither felt inclined to have us go to church regularly, but my mom um, wanted to make sure we received our first communion and our confirmation. So we would go to church until we received those two things. Um, we sat in the very back row. When the pastor said, peace be with you, we got up and left. It wasn't over. We would be at the car and people would still be inside singing. And I was like, mom, I don't think this is over. <laughs> and she's like, we, we did enough for today. But I always felt drawn to the word. I would read my Bible on my own at night and take notes. And um When I was younger, I got to go spend the night at friends' houses, and then I would end up going to church with them. And so I was super excited to experience different traditions and different religions. For me, as I got older, I would ask, can you just drive me to church? And So um, you were taking the initiative. I was, yes. Okay. I I just felt I needed to be there, and I wanted to be there. I wanted to learn more. So I was super um, seeking the truth, and Mm. it was interesting because my mom then thought well what's wrong with you why do you want to go there (laughs) and it was always looked at as like a bad thing like oh does she need help what's wrong with her um but as I got older I could go on my own and I ended up you know I married my high school sweetheart and we wanted to find a church on our own he grew up in a Methodist church and that's where we got married but it wasn't really a good fit for us And so we decided to go to an evangelical Lutheran church, which was great, but we weren't getting the Bible. We weren't getting the gospel. Hmm. We were getting world, world news and just very like world topics. We decided together, we really wanted to dive deeper into the word and we heard about Bible-based churches and we were like, (laughs) well, maybe this, maybe we have one. And so that's how we found Grace Point and we found Grace Point fell in love with the message, but we're like, okay, let's just try some other churches. And we ended up, nope, this is where we want to be. And so that's kind of how we fell into Grace Point. Um, For me, as a Christian, I was always a believer, but it wasn't until my adult life, really when I um, was pregnant with my first daughter, that I Hmm. started my relationship with Christ, Hmm. where I felt like... I was in it. Um, I had a really bad pregnancy. And so I I had a lot of time on bed rest, just praying and talking to God. And that's really Mm. when I invited him into my heart and asked him um, to be my savior. And um, that's really when my relationship with him started. Is there someone in your life that uh, spoke into that at all? Or was it more situational? And because you took the initiative as a kid, 
that those thoughts started to, you know, conjure up and you were thinking about it and processing it? No, there wasn't one person. I did have a best friend from college who um, always kind of tried to bring me back to the Bible, Mm. but it was really just my situation. And it was just really me surrendering surrendering everything Mm. because I had to. Yep. You know, it was the baby's life. It was my life on the line. And I really just gave it all to God. That is when I then started diving deeper into the Bible. Okay. For you, that turning point was during the pregnancy. In that moment of need, you realized how important that relationship was to you. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And then it just, it grew stronger from there. Let's talk a little bit now about how you got to Grace Point as far as working here. I know as a missions director, from what I can tell, you love missions, and that's really cool, (laughs) and you do a wonderful job. Thanks. Um, But what led you into the position of being the missions director? What what took you that direction for your life? Okay, we had this moment where um, our pastor was saying, go and find your ministry. It was like that year where you find where you love to serve and serve. And at the time, I was serving with my husband. We were um, working with with kids in the kids' ministry. And I'll be honest, I don't like a lot of other people's kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love them, but I, I, it's not a strength of mine to sure. teach children, especially with the, the class that we taught was the second hour of church. So you would sit through church and the kids sat in Sunday school and then parents would go to a Sunday school class and the kids would move to a different class. So they were tired, they were hungry, and they didn't want to do any more crafts. And so... I thought, okay, I'm going to find my ministry because right mm. now I'm. this is what my husband likes to do. And so missions came up and I thought, well, I, I like missions. I like the idea of that. I can help because really the, the job they were looking for, the, the volunteer, was to communicate mission trips to our Plainfield campus. Okay. And I said, well, I can do that. I signed up. It was great. I went on my very first mission trip to Spain mm. and loved it and thought, okay, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to serve. This is what makes my heart happy. Um, I saw a lot of value in it. I volunteered there uh, for a few years. And then the missions pastor was moving because his wife got a new job Mm -hmm. and they were looking for someone to fill the position for in the interim. And I received a call and I kind of thought, well, no, I, I can't do that. I'm just a volunteer. And so I politely said no. Um, And then I got another call that said, can you pray about it? And so I said, sure, I'll pray about it. And I didn't really, because I didn't really have time for it. I thought this is not where I'm needed. Like I I have other jobs. I had other jobs. I was in real estate. Uh, That that was going to be my other question. Where where are you coming from? Yeah, I was in real estate. I was super active in my kids, like schools, like the PTA. And I helped my husband run his law firm. So I'm like, wow. I really have no time for this. <laughs> no. I'm like, you are talking to the wrong person. Yeah. Uh, then it ended up, they called again, and we had a meeting. And I'm like, okay, I will fill in until you find somebody. Well, I filled in, and I was kind of like, okay, I love every single thing about this job. I love the, the missionary partners. I love the staff. I love my church. I love the mission. I love that we go after church planners. Mm. And so... I said, okay, I'll stay. And so here I am. Okay, so now that you're the professional, you've been here mm-hmm. a couple of years, what would you say if you were to get on an elevator right now and explain to somebody, this is what missions is about. This mm-hmm. is why people go overseas and deal with a, a third culture, with something that they're not comfortable with here at, mm-hmm. at home. What would that answer look like? Well, I would say for us, because at Grace Point, we are super focused on church planting, mm-hmm. which... Um, which I love because there's so many mission opportunities out in the world. There's, you know, you can go to an orphanage. There's, I mean, there's just so many different things. You can build, you know, dig wells. There's a lot of needs. There's so many yeah. needs, but we're so focused on making disciples. And while you're walking alongside our partners, you are growing so much in your own faith. You're getting a closer relationship with Christ and the biggest part of it is seeing a new culture, seeing sometimes people who have absolutely nothing of monetary value. Sure, yeah. 
have the greatest love of Christ and the most joy. Yeah. And it's something like that. When you see that and you see it and experience it, that you come back and you just, everything's more clear. Hmm. Like one of my favorite mission trips was to Kenya with my family. I was able to bring my two daughters and they were in junior high at the time. And the kids that we were interacting with, we did a vacation Bible school there. Um, they had no shoes. They had no toys. Hmm. Like we had, we brought crayons and they were, they were take, they, I mean, you would have thought it was like Christmas <laughs> because we had crayons. Yeah. But these kids were so happy because they knew Jesus and they loved Jesus and they, they talked to us about him and they sang to us and they danced and it was all because of their love of Christ. And it's like, it was so cool to see my kids in that situation because they were like, Mom, they don't have anything. Can we leave them our clothes? Can we give them this? Can we bring one home? Wow. I mean, my youngest one want, he cried every night there because she Aww. wanted to bring one little boy home. And I was like, we can't do that. <laughs> He's very much loved here. Um, it just, it opens your eyes to the world around you and, you're not, you, and it gets you outside of your bubble. You grow closer to Christ by just opening up your mind and your heart to these people and yeah. going and being there physically and not just reading about it. So that was more of a perspective from somebody going from here on a missions trip. Mm -hmm. What would be the perspective of the missionary themselves? For them, this is a lifelong decision. This yeah. is their job. This is their identity. This is what they've signed up to do from here on out. So for them, when you talk to the missionaries that you're working with here at Grace Point, uh, how do they make that decision where they're like, I want to do this. And this is with all abandon, I'm going to be a missionary for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And how is that different from a short-term mission situation? I would tell you that each partner that I have spoken to, and it's been a lot, even people that we interview to be partners, um, it's not something that they've decided. Hmm. It's It's been a calling. Wow. It is yep. they okay. heard God and they listened and they followed through. Um, not one of them woke up and said, oh, I think I might do this. It's all this is God's plan for my life. Hmm. And that's what makes it so cool because, you know, sometimes I, I'm human. I wake <laughs> up and I think, oh, I don't want to go to work today. Sure, yeah. And I'm sure they probably have those moments too, but they're so on fire and so passionate about sharing the gospel and following the command to go and raise more disciples that they are, they're, they're doing it. And that's their job. And they love it. And they're equipped to do it because it's God's call on for them. It was their calling on their life versus yeah. them making that decision. Yeah. That makes sense. One phrase I hear a lot here at Grace Point is the term being on mission. What what does that mean exactly? Being on mission, it's something I say a lot, is being available and being willing and sometimes courageous enough to go share the gospel. Hmm. You know, we know the truth of the Bible. We know the gospel, but to share it can be difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. But to be on mission means you are going and you are following God's command to go and share. In my mind, when I say I'm on mission, we're all on mission. Yeah. Like when we step outside of the church doors, that's the mission field. Being on mission isn't just a short-term trip. It's not, oh, I'm going to mm. be on mission one week this year. No, you're, you should be on mission every day. What are some of the major things that our missionaries focus on in their field? One of the biggest things is developing relationships with the locals and then uh, discipling them into leaders mm -hmm. within their own culture. Um, the point of a missionary is to never stay in one spot forever, like especially because we have church planters. We don't sure. want them to plant one church and stay there. Yep. We want them to... And they want to teach locals to take over so that they can go to the next spot and train and raise up new leaders. Um, a lot of it is developing relationships, training, teaching. You know, they do a lot of small group events. There's so much outreach. And that's one of my favorite things is that we get to help with a lot of that. We get to help with the outreach, you know, by sending a team of 10 people that's 10 more people on their staff, technically, yeah, yeah. you know, we're able to have VBS, we're able to do bigger things with them 
because we we're coming with such a, a large group. You're saying then that uh, missions trips that we send from here at Grace Point are a huge help to the missionaries because there's things that they can do as a large group versus just the missionaries. That that makes a lot of sense, and that explains why we do trips here at Grace Point. But what about the biblical backing? Well, I would say the Great Commission. Okay. Okay, so Matthew twenty eight nineteen, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. You know, it's the command to go. Yep. It can't be any more clear than that. Go, therefore, <laughs> and make disciples. So it's right there. It is right here. And it doesn't mean necessarily that you have to go overseas. Again, there's a lot that you can do locally in your workplace, in your sure. neighborhood, in your own community. That's that concept of being on mission. Yes, it is the concept of being on mission. And that's where I think some people think, oh, I'm not suited for missions. And it's like, but you are. Yeah. You are. It's not for a select group of people. It's for all of us. And that's why it's so important to be on mission and to understand that, oh, well, I don't want to go overseas. Well, you don't have to. You can go in your backyard. You can go sit on your driveway. You can go to the grocery <laughs> store. You can go in your workplace. You know, there's places you can go. Yeah. Well, okay. So let's take it from there. Let's say somebody right now is listening to this podcast mm -hmm. and they've contemplated going on a missions trip. They don't feel like they have anything to offer. Or maybe they feel like they do, but it's kind of a weird thing that they're not sure where to serve or how to get plugged in. How would you counsel them through walking into a short-term mission trip? So, you know, we have several trips planned each year, and each one is different. Um, but I would ask, like, what are your favorite things to do? Hmm. Like, what do you love? Yep. What do you love to do? And we'll find your giftings in that. And anyone can be useful. Anyone can be used as a tool. Really, I would just encourage you to dig deep and figure out what it is you love to do, and we'll find a spot for you. Okay. Is there anywhere that they can look where they can find information or they can get a hold of you? Definitely. Our website is a great source for all Perfect. things um, missions. And it lists all of our trips and the dates and our partners and a little information about each. Well, Nancy, it's really been fun to sit and chat with you about missions and about your heart for missions and what we do here at Grace Point for missions and our missionaries. I'm really looking forward to... Uh, hearing stories in the future of some of the people that have gone on missions trips at some point it would be fun to do uh, maybe a little podcast with one of your absolutely mission trip leaders or people that have gone mm -hmm. together yes. and they can share their story and, yes that'll be and great how it was so well thank you for your time i thank really you. appreciate it again this has been the gp podcast if you have any questions or you want to get more information about grace point itself you can go to www.gracepoint.us and then just navigate to the missions section and you'll find out all you need to know about our missionaries, about Nancy, about what trips are coming up or any questions you have there and how to contact her as well. Thanks again for listening and we hope you come back next time.